Okay, inverse functions. The whole idea with these things is very, very simple. All we're going to do for the rest of this unit is switch x and y. Okay, that's the whole point of an inverse function. I can explain this easier in a graph. So pretend I drew in red a function. Okay, there it is. It's some parabola thing. In blue, I'm going to show you the inverse of that function. What we did to get there is I took every single point in here, which has you know, x, y coordinates. Every one of those x, y coordinates, I flipped over to make it a y, x coordinate. In other words, I took the y value from this first one and stuck it in the x coordinate. And I took the x value and I stuck that in the y coordinate. Okay, so take that idea of switching x and y and look at these two problems. First, the one on the left, right here. What it's saying is suppose that a function has a y value of negative one and an x value of six. Okay, this is the y value, this is the x value right in there. So the x value is six. You can imagine if I wrote that as a point, another way to say this would be suppose for the function g, we'll say g of x has the point six comma negative one, right? There's the x and y coordinates. All we do is we switch those around and we find where it is in the inverse function. Okay, so that's going to make it for the inverse function, it'll be a coordinate point at negative one comma six. All right, so in other words, you plug in the x value of negative one, you get a y value of six. Well, look at what this is asking. It's saying, what's the y value given the x value? So it says, here's my x value, negative one, what's the y value? It's gonna be six, all right? You're just switching x and y. Likewise, in this next one, it says, hey, the inverse function, if you give it the x coordinate of negative nine, gives you a y coordinate of two. So what if you gave it an x coordinate of two. Well, you see it's just asking for you to switch x and y again. That's gonna give you a y coordinate of negative nine. We just switch those every single time. It's a very easy pattern. So if you look at this table right here, how can I do this for a table? All a table is, is a bunch of points. Whereas I was doing one point at a time on the left, now I'm gonna do the point four comma three, six comma seven, 10 comma nine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All we have to do to find which one of these things below is an inverse is go like this. Are you ready for this? Watch. Y, X, okay? Which one of those things below matches what I just did? It's gonna be the one that has X values of three, seven, nine, 12, 16, and Y values of four, six, 10, 13, 15. So let's look through the list here. I see X values, three, seven, nine, 12, 16, four, there it is, right there. Okay, there's the inverse. So compare those rows and you can kind of see the x, y shifting pattern. We're gonna get into the graphs like I drew right here in some other examples, but for now let's just keep it to this one.